Okay, so today we're going to cover chapter 13, which is the multivariate and spatial temporal geostatistics, which is, uh, I personally think that this one is a kind of like a most struggling and then a very, very complicated model that I, that I know of because these multivariate things and then a, especially a spatial temporal one is a very, very complicated model because we also consider time at the uh, time and space in the same model. So this one is uh, one of the most difficult chapter. And then uh, authors also just kind of very, very briefly summarize about what these things is about, especially for the multivariate one is uh, kind of like, uh, I want you to maybe check the check the references the mention in this chapter because especially for the, for example like uh, Vivant and uh, uh, Pebesma book this book this book actually about the uh, like a 2013 one which one is applied special data and uh, analysis with R second edition this book is actually one of the I would say about the Bible for the applied special data analysis. At the same time, this book is also very, very complicated because this 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 book actually co consists of the 10, 10 chapters of this book because I I already studied this book. And then this book, I personally think that this book is just kind of a worthwhile to buy it if you're really interested in conducting the special data analysis because this one is just kind of a tells you about the very fundamental mechanism of the uh, of the special data analytics, and then also half of the chap half of the half of the book, like a chapter one through five, I guess, actually cover about the, how you can managing the special database by itself, and then uh, the other half of the book actually mentions about the special point pattern analysis or geostatistics, and then uh special regression model for the area data or special temporal data set. So I really recommend this book. And then this, this chapter also uh, confer a lot of, a lot of contents from the, that book. But the thing is that the authors actually summarize too briefly about the multivariate and then the spatial temporal geostatistics. So this this chapter by itself does not fully cover about the, what these are the, about. These are how how we can do these things and then how we can maybe conducting the special temporal geostatistics. So which means you need additional kind of references if you really want to fully understand about the, this chapter. Okay. Okay. So this one is just kind of a, about the multivariate and then special. Temporal geostatistic, and then uh, they actually using the, about the nitro dioxide air quality data set and the population density as a covariate, which means that these two variables actually what is what is called is the correlated to one another because higher density means the more higher likelihood of the uh, generating the these kind of a nitro dioxide air dioxide kind of a gas emissions, you know? So dense area tends to be have higher level of the NO2 air quality data. So higher air NO2 kind of a concentration. So so those are those two variables are very correlated to one another. And then uh, that actually allows us to thinking about the multivariate geostatistics as a kind of a joint regression model approaches. So that means we just try to do do the each of the bear each of the things separately and then try to overlap into each other to explain the how how each variable can be can explain the variation of the that NO2 air quality data set to one another. So anyway, so 13.1 actually uh, present about how we can preparing the this what is called the spatial temporal geostatistics. So I think that when you read this chapter, I, I, you, might, you may find that uh, this kind of a code by itself cannot run smoothly, you know? That is because of 
when you're looking at this website, I'm going to leave this website on the chat. This one is actually uh, the, the website for the exercise and then a data set. And then when you go to the, the GitHub, you can actually get the data set about the chapter 13 R data here. And then you can download, after downloading the dead data, you can actually work on the, these kind of uh, command. Actually, in, when you open the dead R data, it is already done with this. And then you don't have to actually run this code from scratch. But the thing is, I just wanted to show you about the, what data by itself going to be look like, because I think that, uh, I think that uh, Pedrica, I think that you are you are in actually in Europe, so and then uh, you might you might be familiar with uh, these kind of uh, data set. Actually, these data are actually obtained from the European Environmental Agency, like the EEA. In case of the US, US actually have a have an agency called the Environmental Protection Agency, like the EPA. I maybe I can show you EPA uh, here, like the EPA. Oh, this not Korean. Actually, in 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 the U.S., U.S. actually have uh, their own data portal, like a U.S. United States Environmental Protection Agency and then uh, U.S. EPA. And then uh, they also have a lot of a different kind of a data set. And also, maybe when you go, maybe in case of the U.S., maybe when you go USGS, like a uh, United States Geo uh, Geological Survey. They also are providing a lot of last images or GIS kind of a data set about the air quality or some of the rest of data set, like earthquake data set, et cetera. So, but in case of the Europe, uh, actually others use the air quality data set obtained from the European Environmental Agency. And then uh, that EA actually providing the what is called the air quality e-reporting. E so when you click the, this link, uh yeah it takes a little time but uh hold on yeah here this one is the eea agency and then uh, you when when you can see here since the 2016 they actually accumulating the air quality data set in here and then uh, to downloading the data set when you click the this air quality assessment method measurements you will see this kind of a table. And then to get the air quality table, you actually link with the air quality statistic table to this one first. And then you can select the, uh, maybe Germany in this case. And then year gonna be maybe 2017 here. And then Maybe air pollutant gonna be NO2, which is this. And then when you apply the filter, it also takes a little time and then you will get the results like this, like a 7,771 record. And then when you go to the, to the right, you will see the link to the raw data. And then whenever you click the, this one, you will find that uh, this link, like a uh, time series data set, a uh, CSV kind of data set. So these are the, actually the data set we have to download in it. But the thing is, it takes a lot of time to do that. So the manually, but the thing is, in case of the authors, they actually have, a, have already prepared for the dead URL. Uh, okay, it takes a little time, but when you click the, these URL links, um, actually others actually have uh, this kind of uh, information, right? And then when you click this one and then you can save as, as, a, as a CSV file, it is actually says about the web page, but you don't have to saving as a web page. You just uh, saving as a maybe a air quality called CSV. 
yeah, I already saving you, but you can save this. And then when you go there, and then uh, whenever you double click this one, you can open into Excel. Because I'm going to try to show you the, a little bit different way of the cleaning up this data set, OK? And then because, because according to the, code, the R code uh, presented in the chapter, it means, assumes that you're already downloading the that chapter R data file. But I'm going to try to show you how you can prepare in the, the, those data set from scratch. So whenever you're downloading the, that data, Maybe whenever you assume that it's collecting the this kind of data set, and then uh, you will actually see these two column is the web page kind of format, so you have to delete that. And then uh, whenever you click this one, and then you can only delete delete the delete the uh, first half first part except for the this CSV link file, and then. You can add in insert the cell, and then you can you can say about the maybe links, and then and then you can say and then also when you go down to the bottom, there is also another kind of a uh, um, web page format in here, and then you can delete all of these. So what we what we I just do is I just only left about the link URL link by itself. And then uh, this one is, uh, I just try to save in this one as a table, okay? And then I can save this one and close it. And then in R, you can maybe, let me show you a little bit bigger because I think that definitely it's, you, you can, you cannot see this one. Can you see more clearly right now? It's much better. Why do you want me to make it much bigger? If you, you see, could do, if you could zoom in, that would be better. A little bit bigger. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you could maximize your R Studio, I don't think we need to see the URL okay. anymore. There. Okay, yeah, all right. So now you can see, can you see more clearly? Is that better? Yes, thank you. Okay. Yeah, a little, a little bit. If you, if you can a little, even a little bit more, that would be better to me. A uh, you, don't, you want not to make it much bigger? Okay. Maybe 24. Now, is it okay to see that? Yeah, yeah, okay, that's great. Okay. So, maybe uh, you can actually, first thing you want you have to do is that we actually get the link consisting of the, all of the those CSV downloading link. So first thing you have to do is the library, you have to uh, import the R curve package, and then you can actually load in the, this, this CSV file. And then uh, that CSV file gonna be have, uh, have uh, all of the, those links definitely imported. And then you can make the empty list first, and then maybe by using the for loop, you can actually uh, downloading those CSV directly from the website that those, by using the those link and then appending the those things as a list like this. And then you can actually, after that, you now you can prepare all of the those data set and then uh, from, from this, from this after, the, after this code, you can learn the, learn the code in the textbook. Okay, that's the, what I wanted to talk about. Okay, because when you can see here in here, this one actually may not work very well because 
I don't know where they actually get this kind of uh, station data or all these kind of data actually come from. Because I, I actually did not find the, those kind of station metadata in here. I personally think, I, my personal doubt is they maybe in that EAE reporting uh, database, they, they also providing the, this station metadata, but I failed to get the, this kind of metadata. So instead of that, I actually directly uh, downloading from the, those links and then I actually preparing the, those data set a little bit separately by using this R code. So I'm gonna also copy and paste this R code at the, in the chat. And then I hope that this might works for you all because at least for me, it actually works. And then, and then I will say about the when you try to run the this whole loop, this one actually takes time, because uh, whenever you when we, when you looking at the this CSV file, actually there are the five hundred fifty nine kind of a CSV data link you have to downloading it to to do the do the chapter in the practice. So so that actually takes a lot of time to appending the appending the all of the those those each data CSV data file as a list. Okay. And then and then after that you can uh you can start on the this code, this code, and this code, and this code, and this one. And but the thing is from from after this, this one cannot be done because I try to find the TCL base station CSV file from the that website, but I could not find the that database. Because uh, what this one actually do is uh, the the previous CSV file actually contain about the uh, NO2 air quality data set by the station. But what this one actually do for the all of the these things actually try to aggregate the, those time series data set by the station. And after that, we can, we can actually draw in the, this kind of a, this kind of a plot. So which each, each, each one actually, each location actually represents about the, uh, whether it's uh, like a measuring station and then uh, this dark, dark blue and pale blue kind of things actually represents about the quality of the N2 by the each station. So that's the how this one actually preparing. And then uh, they actually try to learn, try to show, share the code about the, how those things works. But the thing is when I looking at their data set and then, uh, and then uh, how all of the, these things actually does that seem to be work, work very well, at least for me. So I just, instead, I just uh, try to looking at the, that website and then uh, looking at the, those data set and then uh, try to do those things separately. So I hope that those are gonna be work for you well also. And then any questions, anything? Cause in case of the Europe, kind, Europe data set, they actually, Kind of allows the users to the downloading the those data set by using the those URL links, not the directly allows us to the directly downloading the file by itself. So it's a little bit strange, but yeah, that's how they work about the data set because uh, they actually sharing the link and then uh, that link gonna be allows us to the uh, downloading the file. So. That's the how these things work. Cause the preparing the these data set by itself also very, very complicated. Cause the, this one is actually spatial temporal data set, which means the longitude and latitude location uh, information at the same time, the time. At the same uh at the same time, it also has the time sequence variable, like a hourly based NO2 quality measurement. So 
that's the thing. And then uh, when we preparing the, all of the, these data set, now we can actually learn the, what is called the multivariate geostatistics. In here, they really, really briefly summarize about the, what the multivariate geostatistic is about, about the uh, covariate of the, each X variable, and then how they, how, what kind of things we have to we have to do to do the multivariate geostatistic like a co quigging or like a like a cross variograms. All of the these things actually when you're looking at the that Bibant and Pebesma books, that book actually explains about the how you how we can join the cross variograms and then a co quigging things. But in here, they did not show the how to do this. Actually, there is R code about the how to do these things, but I cannot share those R codes because that book that book is actually already copyrighted. So due to the copyright issues, I cannot show you those kind of codes. But if you really want to show, if you really want to know about the, how you can conducting the co-quigging and then the co-variograms, you have to tap out the door, uh, that apply data, anal uh, special data analysis without book in a second editions. Okay. That's the, what I can do for now because uh, they actually did not show anything about the result or outcome. Actually, what the co-quigging things actually about is you in actually in the in the result gonna be you may have uh, this kind of a uh, maybe retis kind of a uh, images maybe if you have a uh, if you have a uh, kind of a uh, two two multivariate kind of a variable maybe like a like a correlation kind of a dia correlation kind of a uh, uh, metrics you can actually have a set of the set of the multi uh cross cross a variogram or co quigging result, like like these kind of things. Like uh, if you have a two two variable, you will have a six, maybe three or three variable, you will have a six kind of a variable, six kind of outcome to to get the these kind of a co cross variogram and co quigging result as a co quigging result. That's the how the how the result is gonna be looked like. Cause uh, what the co quigging and co variable actually does is we we already have uh, more than two variants, two 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 variable related to the this kind of spatial patterns or spatial density, like uh, in this one. So what the what multivariate geostatistic do as far I understand, as far as I understand is that they actually do the separate kind of a special regression modeling or geostatistic progress, like a separate cook, separate quigging or a separate variogram process. And then after that, they actually try to correlating those things together. But I don't know how exact the mechanism about the, how those things gonna be worked. Cause uh, I to be honest, I have uh, that apply special data analysis with R book, and then I actually read those book, and then but still I don't understand how those things works because the formula by itself is the too complicated for me to understand. So that's my kind of a uh, limitation about the explaining these things. But conceptually, what this one actually do is the as a kind of a joint modeling process. Each of the those uh, multi -vari uh, variable gonna be uh, conducted separately as a kind of a new as a kind of a new geostatistic model, and then uh, combine those things together by using the co quigging and cross variogram kind of a process to measuring about how those things correlated. Uh, one another and then how those correlation covariate co, co actually affects to the our outcome spatial pattern. That's the how multivariate geostatistic works. That's the thing that I really can explain about. 
And then the 13.3 is actually geo, uh, uh, spatial temporal geostatistics. So this one is actually what they actually using the what they actually collecting for the nitro dioxide air quality data set in the in the section 13.1. And then this one is also have about the spatial temporal variogram, uh, variogram model. I'm kind of what is interesting about this one is whenever you plotting these things, you have a distance and time like a space and time variable and then a this one actually presenting about a, a set of the, what is called the product sum, kind of a modeling method. And then uh, each variable and graph actually uh, presenting the separately, as you can see, uh, as you can see in the, in the figure on the right. So as you can see here, each, like a yellow one is the most rated one. So this one actually have a uh, one variogram and then a pink one is another separate variogram. So all of the, these variogram are gonna be drawing the separate and then this one actually shows about the, how general trend about the each time period, time period variogram is about. And then uh, whenever you, we actually do, this one is the kind of a two dimensional functions, we can actually do plotting this one like this, like a, time lag to the hours and then a distance. And then each color actually represents about the intent, uh, like a NO2 quality intensity. So there is a definitely have a, depending on the distances, there is actually uh, the time lag goes by, there is actually more yellowish kind of things as a farther distance from the origin. But still I, try to figure out how I can interpret these things, but it is still very complicated for me to understand. Cause this one, this chapter is really very, very difficult for me to understand actually. So I just try to try to do as best as I can. And then in, in here, it also says about the, uh, this kind of a variogram actually can be uh, can be conducted by the what is called a product sum model, like uh, some get calculating the product of the space and time, like a uh, space multiplied by time kind of things. And then we can actually have uh, some of the more, seems like a more like a standardized or generalized the trend of the, of the, these patterns by the time lag and then how time lag and then the distance, how those NO2 intensity gonna be varies between the time and distance. So, and then those are the can be done by the, this kind of a 3D plus. Like a actually sample observation data is a more like a noisy kind of a 2D, uh, 3D surfaces. But when we try to do the product sum, it is more, we can actually get the more smooth out smooth kind of a graph so that we can actually understand about the, how those intensity gonna be changes over time and then at the distance from the station that measures. So after that, as you can see here, this one is just kind of showing us about the, just only temporal kind of a changing of the NO2 quality changes over time. So this one is just kind of a plotting the time series time series analysis that's showing about the how those, how NO2 quality gonna be plunctuated to one another, plunctuated over time. And then, and then what's the time lags between the, between the, some of the time interval kind of things. Like a, like a peak between the interval, like a time lag between the peaks, like this. Like maybe I would say, right here, maybe, or maybe, maybe the bottom one, like what's the time lag? We can get the bottom one as a cycle. That one is a kind of like a little bit more to worthwhile to looking at when we try to looking at these graphs. And then, uh, and then in the time series model, you, you can also thinking about the, what's the, 
uh, what's the variations is changes like uh, these kind of uh, graphs showing that these kind of uh, uh, like a line chart kind of graph can be get to to show us about uh, how they how variate various those kind of time series data set is about depending on the their prediction mode the time series modeling predictions or some of the calculating the residual of the time series model, regression model. It is more like an econometric type of the problem, but the thing is what this, uh, this plotting actually shows us about is uh, it, it is actually plunctuated and then very noisy kind of uh, graphs that shows the nitro uh, dark size quality changes over time. And then there is also definitely we can identify the sum of the variation about the time lag between the peak or between the bottom trough kind of a point. Okay. And then, and then whenever we, based on the, these kind of a fluctuation and then uh, uh, things, and then we can actually finally try to present visualizing about the, how those nitro uh, air quality gonna be changes over time. Like like this kind of a mapping. So in the February there is a high concentration of the nitro quality nearby the station because those station rural station area there is actually in the cold weather those nitrogen tends to be settled down into the surface so that actually measure the higher level of the NO2 quality. So actually those NO2 does not go, uh, go off during the winter. But the thing is when you're trying to look at the May or summer kind of things, there is a pretty low level kind of things because these are the kind of, of spring or summer season, there is a lot of wind and then uh, there is also very hot temperature that hot temperature gonna be allows the NO2 dioxide going up to the, uh, going out of the earth, like uh, not, not to stay in the surface. So that's the reason why we have a low level of the, this NO2 quality during the, these times, except for the winter. Winter is the very cold season. Cold season tends to be, I, I know that but as far as I understand is the NO2 kind of things is, uh, actually NO2 by itself is a very heavy kind of uh, air, uh, heavy kind of, I would say material, <laughs> I would say things, material, but but the thing is during the, win during the winter, due to the cold temperature, those NO2 air quality actually, uh, those NO2 tends to be stay on the surface, which is the why there is a lot of uh, intensity in a concentration of the NO2 quality nearby the, those measuring measuring the stations. So, so these are the kind of things. Actually, in this case, we actually get the data hourly based hourly based basis air quality data set from the that European Environmental Agency. But what if we have an irregular time space data set? There is actually another packages like a FF, SF time or uh, uh, packages. And then in that case, maybe there is another way we can actually go around to conducting the spatial, spatial temporal statistic. But in here, they did not mention how we can do irregular space time. So actually this is the end of the chapter. So. Actually, chapter by itself does not have uh, too much explanation. And also, chapter just kind of a very, very briefly summarized about uh, how we can conduct in the multivariate and then the spatial temporal geostatistic. So therefore, I personally think that I really recommend you to check out uh, these books or some of the references they actually present, uh, include, uh, mention for this chapter. Maybe one of the things that I also wanted to recommend you here is uh, there is a PEPES article about the multivariate statistic in S, like R, 
kind of a multi-thread version of the R, like uh, how we can use the GeoStack packages. There is a, uh, a journal article about the, how we can do multivariate geostatistic. Like uh, in here, they actually shows about the how, maybe let me a little bit, yeah, how uh, they conduct in the, this, variogram, univariate, and then uh, as I can as I, as I just explained, like us, like uh, when we have a multivariate kind of a uh, geostatistic, we can actually have a set of the, these kind of a uh, uh, sample variogram depending on the all of the these independent variable, and then across variograms and then the sample variograms, and then we can also have a co-queen kind of a techniques you can we can use in here. So, so you can check the, this article if you're really interested in the multivariate geostatistics in R. And also check out the, those apply spatial data analysis with R if you are interested in the spatial temporal statistics. And then, and then also, uh, also when you, uh, Looking at the uh, at this one, hold on. Uh, maybe there is also another book. Uh, this one. Maybe I will share this one too. Because uh, this book is also have a kind of how we can conduct in the spatial temporal statistic with R. And then uh, this one, actually you can uh, click the, in here, it is a PDF is a clip to downloading it. So whenever you click the, this downloading a copy, you can actually get the, get the book because uh, the author actually uh, uh, have uh, providing the, PDF version of this book. So maybe if you want to check out the special temporal statistics, you can also check out the, this book too. Because this book is, as far as I know, is the, one of the recent, recently published this book about the special temporal statistics. So I think that this, this is all I can explain about the Special temporal statistic and then multivariate geostatistic for based on the this book. So, do you have any questions so far or anything? Uh, no further questions from me. Okay. No. Yeah, cause uh, cause uh, chapter thirteen is the to briefly explain about the those two techniques and also. I'm not sure about the you where you guys actually working on about the data set, but in my case, it is pretty rare to get this kind of a data set because in case of the my field, like which is the urban planning, it is extremely hard to get about the hourly or daily data set. <laughs> and also when you're thinking about the city or built to environment, it does not change too much as a daily basis. We usually looking at the maybe monthly or maybe yearly basis, but even year, yearly based data set does not show too much variation because the city does not change too much within the year. So actually it is a pretty rare for me to get or process this kind of a data set, except for the when I actually looking at the kind of an environmental kind of a analysis, like an environmental science analysis. But in other part, maybe I personally think that there might be a worthwhile to looking at the, this kind of a data set and then uh, they definitely work on the, this data set a lot. So in that case, spatial temporal statistics or multivariate geostatistics is a very, very useful to understanding about the how, how things, how those patterns or change temporal change is gonna be affected across the space. And then how we can predict the intensity or maybe 
spatial uh, spatial distribution or likelihood or probability of the sum of the event being generated across the space over time. If you have uh, these kind of research questions, you're definitely looking at uh, these spatial temporal statistical statistics. And then uh, this chapter just kind of conceptually explained about how we can conduct in the, these just uh, this multivariate and then a spatial temporal geostatistic by conducting the more like a joint modeling kind of approaches and then uh, conducting the core creaking and uh, measuring the core uh, cross validation cross I would say cross variogram to get to the how how intensity of the something gonna be changes by the deep by the distances depending on the what kind of a variable at the same time, what same time or um as the time time uh based on the time uh, period, so that's how this chapter twelve uh thirteen is about. So, so I think that 